everybody, Steve Pudi from NJ Advanced Media, and welcome back to the I Just Wanted to Get to the Locker Room Down 10 Nothing podcast. I am joined, as always, by Keith Sargent and James Cratch. And fellas, let's get right to it. This is the day where we asked the question. And by we, I mean Sarge. <laughs> and by the <laughs> question, I mean the only question that really is left here for this, this lost season at Rutgers, which is, you know, does Chris Ash think he has the support of the administration? And does he believe he's going to be back next year? Uh, and I have to tell you, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I was a little surprised by the answer. Typically, I've seen this happen. We've all, we've all been to places like this question has to be asked. Usually the answer is something along the lines of, you know, uh, I do believe I'll be back. I have to support, you know, I, we've done a lot of great things. It hasn't shown on the record. This is a building process. You know, they've been behind me from the beginning. That kind of, that kind of thing is typically what we got here. I'm going to read you directly what Chris Ash said. His answer was, you know, I'll be honest with you. I respect the question, but we're going to talk about Michigan State today. All right. So, Sarge, I mean, what do you make of that? Is that just uh, a natural defense mechanism? Is that, you know, he, he just honestly just didn't want to litigate this before the season was over? Or is there something more at work? Listen, Steve, I, I respect the question, but I'm, I'm, I'm only here to talk about Michigan State this week. Uh, oh, that was a perfect setup. Perfect setup. <laughs> Good job. Um, Good job by no. you. I didn't even see it coming. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, it, it's funny because I, I feel like we were just here three years ago where, you know, I, I was the one who asked a lot of those uh, same Kyle Flood uh, questions. And um, no one wants to be in that position. It's not about us, but, you know, every beat writer in the country – has to uh, be there at some point, you know, asking those types of questions. Uh, you're right. USC, you know, Clay Helton, he's on the hot seat. Yep. You know, Kansas, David Beatty, you know, uh, the fact that we hey, waited Kyle to, Flood, to, for that matter. Yeah. And Kyle Flood answered those questions. He he answered them like, you know, we won the, what the yeah. hell was the cup called? The Lamp the Lambert Trophy. <laughs> for <laughs> he, sure. Even toward the end when we knew he was getting fired, he was answering them. Yeah. For sure. Uh, um, and, and I guess the, the, the answer to your question is, um, I think it stems, you know, back to well, one. It's surprising that we didn't ask the question, you know, until this uh, week. But I think it's because you're, 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 you know, respectful to the process, and you, you're, you know, by, by all counts, and we haven't been uh, dishonest with the readers at this point. But um, I think, you know, it's clear that Pat Hobbs, who's making the uh, decision, wants to wait till the end of the season to evaluate, and he wants to see some signs of progress. And you know, at one in ten right now. This is where we're at. Yeah, you know, we wouldn't be asking those questions if they were you know, normal, you know, suckage, you know, so to speak. You know, if they were, you know, three and eight at this point, um, you're probably not asking the same questions. The fact is they're one in 10. They're on 10 game losing streak. And, you know, the AD in, in question has not given any sort of, of vote of confidence and, you know, one way or the other. Um, so that's the reason why we're at this uh, spot. Was I surprised about his answer? A little bit, a little bit. Um, I, I, you know, I think, you know, if you look at Clay Helton, if you look at some of the other coaches who I mentioned, you know, most of them, you know, try to focus, you know, on the season, you know, you know, with respect to the players in the locker room. I think that's kind of a coach's MO. Uh, but, you know, he certainly could have said, listen, you know, we could have bristled at it like Kyle Flood did and say, listen, I'm, you know, I have no reason to w why I have four years left on his contract. He could have said that. He didn't. He just tried to dismiss it. And I think it speaks to, to a coach who really doesn't know, you know, what, what, you know, what, what his future holds. Do you, do you agree with that, Crutch? Yeah. And before we start, I just want to say I hate the whole let's talk about football thing. And I don't understand why. And we've seen on Twitter since the press conference, fans, no matter how much they dislike a coach or frustrated by a team, when they hear the let's talk about football guys, they always rally to that point. I mean, who wants <laughs> to talk fun. about this game between six and five Michigan State and one and ten Rutgers? I mean, yeah. really, like, you want to break it down? I mean, God bless. Like, go someplace else. Anyway, uh, I will say this. I think Sarge is right. Like uh, the way Chris handled the question and answered it, I think like he doesn't really know. I mean, I, I go back to my experience when I dealt with this in the Giants last year. Before we all knew that McAdoo was going to be fired, he would always bristle at the question and dismiss it and act like, you know, what are you talking about? And then the day in Oakland after the report had come out that he was going to get fired the next day, I, I asked him the question. I said, Ben, are you going to be the head coach tomorrow? And the way he answered it was like he was free. Like he knew he was going to get fired. He had accepted his fate, and he was just was going to like it is what it is. I'm I'm moving on. Right. 
Right. What we saw yeah. here was a guy who I think was sort of trying to dismiss the question, but not run away from the question. But I, I just think it speaks to the whole sense that we're got what a couple days to go, and I think there's this growing sense around the program and the university and the, and the city that. We don't really know which way this is going at this point. How could that be? Sure. And that, that just, I mean, that, that just that kind of boggles the mind, too, because and we, we kind of joke about it. But when they lost to Kansas, you were like, all right, well, they're going to go 1-11. I mean, so they've had, I mean, they've had three months to sort of prepare for this, to know that this was going to be bad, especially over these last four games. It hasn't been as bad as maybe we would have expected. I mean, I'm just, the, the fact that there's uncertainty here, Really, uh, I mean, I just, I think that's all on Pat Hobbs. And I, I don't, I get it. You don't want to evaluate the program until the end of the season, but you also don't want your coach twisting in the wind. I mean, you know, this is, this is a guy who, you know, gave out a, uh, went on Twitter for a dopey, you know, for a dopey CBS sports line, July, get, let's get some, let's get some clicks kind of story about the, the hot seat when, and, and said, take my guy off the list. And now here we are, you know, it's, it's one in 10 when there's the, your guys on the list for a reason. And it's just complete silence. I think Hobbs has created this. I think that, you know, it, it, it the uncertainty, if it, he really is coming back, like we expect, uh, does damage to the program. Yeah, I think it speaks to this isn't the normal third year coach, you know, total train wreck right. one and 11, because let's be fair. You know, the guy did inherit, you know, a mess. And again, I keep on going back to it. They are still in the midst of NCAA probation. That's real. And the NCAA probation was a three pronged deal in which, you know, he, he had to uh, pretty much do a house cleaning. OK, so let's be keep stuff in perspective. That being said, you know, the 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 environment around the football program, he hasn't helped matters in the fact that the you know, recruiting has been suspect at best. Um, the you know, the, the whole narrative that he was changing the culture, that's kind of out the window now based on, you know, the, the number of player arrests. And you can't, you know, it's tough to, to pin it all on him. But it's just a fact. You know, 10, 10 players have been arrested Ooh. since January. It's a fact. So, you know, you take that away. You take away, you know, the, the, the idea that we haven't really seen player development. You know, he came in saying this is going to be a, a program that's going to develop players. We haven't really seen that, you know, outside of maybe a few guys, maybe, you know, Tabertoff. You know, there's a, you know, a few guys who, who, who you know, Pacheco looks like he's, he's developing. But for the most part, you can't really say any of the wide receivers have developed, as you pointed out. Sikowski, I don't know if he's gotten any better since, uh, you know, since uh, the summer. So all, all of that, you know, getting back to the point, we're not talking about like a normal uh, circumstance where, where, you know, this guy's been, a, you, know, a, you know, that he inherited what Kyle Flood inherited. You know, he inherited a program that was built to win. That's not what Chris Ash in, inherited. So I think that kind of, you know, and Pat Hodge knows that. So it's not, you know, a, you know a, a black and white, you know, this guy is 1-11 and he needs to go. I think those are the types of things that Pat Hobbs is weighing, you know, just knowing the fact that, you know, this is, uh, you know, a guy who didn't exactly inherit a great situation. Right. But he's failed, as you, and you mentioned this, you rattled off six things. I mean, he's failed in every possible area of the job. I guess that's, that, that's, that's the, that's summing up what you, you said there. Not recruiting well, not developing players, not handling the all, you know, off the field culture, uh, not doing well with alumni relations and not winning games. What is there anything left? I mean, dealing with the press? <laughs> what, else, what else is there? I mean, yeah, so that, I mean, that's, no, that's no, no, yeah, we, we, we talk about it all the time. The guy is brutally honest and, and, you know, I, I, I you know, I respect that. I, I, I put that in his plus yeah. column, but, you know, fans don't really care. I, I, I think, no. but it, from, from, you know, from that standpoint, you know, he did not run away from, from any of the, uh, um, you know, any of the, the, the bad things. He handled the Coben mm -hmm. Bailey back in January. He handled that the right way. He handled the credit card stuff the right way as best as he could. He handled the Bullock uh, stuff. Everyone has said behind the scenes that, he ha that they handled that as well as they could. Again, we're talking about bottom line stuff. They're one in 10, yep. 10 player arrests, yeah, 10. all the stuff that They're are happy. just bottom line. But that being said, right, right. it's not, again, it's not black and white. You know, he did handle all those situations well, unlike, you know, uh, you know, other, you know other coaches and, you know, at other programs. I'm not just saying Kyle Flood. I'm saying, you know, we've seen, you know, Michigan State. We've seen other programs not handle stuff the right way, and they get blasted for it. Chris Ash, by all accounts, has handled stuff the right way, and I do think that's, a, you know, something that, that you know, yeah. is in his plus column. What I come ahead, back Chris. to is that, 
it's very weird for like a one in 10 season, I think, to have had two junctures, which were like handed to Pat on a platter if he wanted them to like, I know he's, you know, to make his vote of confidence. After the Northwestern game, where the team had been abysmal in recent weeks, they come out, they play inspired on homecoming. Ash takes over the defense. He shows fire. You know, he's on the sideline. He gets the penalty, what people have wanted to see from him. That could have been a point to say, look at this. They showed up on homecoming. They, they, they did the alumni proud. We're making progress. You know, clearly he took over the defense and it made an impact. This is what we have. Knowing that you had mm-hmm. this killer November. And then right. after the bye week, you have the Bullock situation. They handle it well. It's a, it's, a, it's a tragic situation. Then he takes the team to Wisconsin. And while I would, you know, I have my issues with how they handled, the, you know, the, the end of the first half there. He takes the team to Wisconsin. They play really hard and they have a much better than expected showing against the Badgers. That was a point, especially when you ha- when Rutgers has their big booster trip and all the donors are out there and it's a rah rah weekend. That was the weekend to say, "Hey, like th- our coach is, is a man of character. The way he handled this off the field issue that you know he saved lives potentially, and we played hard and and this is what we're doing. And even you know Michigan, okay, he probably didn't, but even this Penn State game where the kids played their hearts out and you, and you threw everything in the kitchen sink at Penn State. I, mean, wait, wait, you, I, you, I, I don't want to cut you off. Are you going to give him an extension after all this? I mean, cry out loud. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wow. Finish your point. Finish point, point. Well, well, you. Well, but, you know, you know Crash, there's another podcast that does the <laughs> that does the happy stuff, okay? No, keep on going. I'm I, sorry. I, I, I guess what I'm saying is <laughs> there have been three different junctures during this 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 horrific season where they could have gotten away with saying, Hey, he's coming back. And they didn't, and and they didn't take any of them. And I understand that you don't want to value, but like, what's there really left to evaluate? I mean, nothing that could happen at Michigan's. I mean, like if if Pat Hobbs, like if, like if, if he's got to win it, win this game to keep his job, I just think like, that's just such a a arbitrary measuring stick. And I don't think that's the case. So that's what I don't understand is that, why not – if if he's staying, then why not just come out and say it? And it's not because we want to get the story or – it's just because this makes sense from a, a whole standpoint of moving forward. Because I think if they if they go out to Michigan State, win or lose, whatever, if the message just becomes, hey, uh, we're staying the course, uh, talk to you later. Let's go watch some basketball. Like, you can make I just a, don't think the fan base is going to buy that. You can make a legitimate yeah. point case – and, you know, if, if Chris Ash does come back and he comes back and we'll get to that in a true and false, I'm sure. But, you know, if he does come back, that, that Pat Hobbs um, has done a little bit of damage from a recruiting uh, standpoint. I, and uh, remember what he told me, it's on NJ.com, just Google it. Like after the, the Dennis Dodd um, tweet, you know, he said that he he, he came out and, and strongly, uh, you know, rebuked that based on recruiting you know, to help with recruiting because he didn't want that, you know, that story out there with the notion that his coach was on the hot seat from August on. Well, you know, since then, and I get that he's been, you know, has been steadfast in the fact that he said, I'm going to evaluate programs at the end of, at, at, you know, at the end of the season. But that being said, you can make a, a, a serious case that if Chris Ash does come back. He, Pat Hobbs has impacted recruiting because, you know, unlike uh, back in the day where, where signing day was in February, we're talking about, you know, December 20th or so. Where, where, where they're going to have the signing day, you know, where it's coming right on, on us. And, you know, the fact that he has not come out and, and offered a vote of confidence, I, you can make a case that he's impacted recruiting. And, and that's, Steve, a nice, you, that's a nice trend. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Kratz. I'm sorry. I say you made, you made the joke about an extension, but and this is, I'm so sure something we'll discuss is that <laughs> if he's coming back, you're going to have to, if, Sarge is right. You're going to have to fight a negative perception that like, even if he comes back, people are going to say, well, you know, this is, you know, he, you know what's going to happen next year? Like, you're going to have a very tough time combating all of these things that you need to flip around to progress as a program. And I just wonder, like, you know, like, OK, so like, what's the plan? And the only way I can think of that you really can, like, necessarily hammer home a statement, as crazy as it sounds, might be to give him an extension. And obviously, we know they can't do that politically, of course. Right. Yes, that would. Uh, I'm not prepared. I, I'm not prepared to cover riots. I don't have that level of. Uh, <laughs> at this stage of my at this stage of my career, I really just prefer not to have people, you know, chasing chasing me with pitchforks. All right. So let's go. That's a good transition to the true or false. 
because the first true or false item, we are upon it. We have arrived. We've arrived at the moment where the true or false is at least partially true. <laughs> at 1 and 11, does Chris Ash get fired? False. Does he get fired? Is he fired? False? False. Okay. Has, has the meter – and look, I am still false. I just, I just feel like – it's moved from a 10% to a, is there something going on that I'm not seeing 26, 7, 8%? Am I, are you agree with me that perhaps it's not as, you know, for a foregone conclusion as you thought a few weeks ago? Um, I have a hard time giving percentages, um, but am I, I, I might have actually a couple of weeks ago, you know, said one, one or 2% and, uh, it's increased yeah, from that. I haven't had a hard time um, in the past. <laughs> I, 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 I have heard other people, you know, you know, if you want to give a percentage, you know, that's fine. But um, has it moved? I think it's moved. Yes. I think there's, I, I would, you know, back in early October, I would have been pretty much shocked, you know, if he was fired even at 1 and 11 based on what I was being told yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't be shocked on Sunday if, if that means anything. Wow, interesting. Right. I wouldn't – I think I'm the same – sorry, Jimmy. I think we talked about this weeks ago is that 1 in 11 is a really bad situation. Yeah. And when you see like come a, some of the other stuff going on, you know, the people saying they're going to cancel the season tickets and, you know, the, 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 the botch thing. I, I know it sounds very insignificant, but like the tone deaf answer about the 150th anniversary, it just seems like there's this kind of like this – I just get the feeling that there's an edge to all of this that has yeah. kind of developed in the past few weeks that I, I still think he's going to stay, but it's just like you're one in 11 and 0 and nine in the big 10. And Pe it, that's Pe bad. People are pissed. Okay. And yeah, it's absolutely. not just the fans that we hear about all the time, but people who, yeah. you know, who, who have some influence are pissed. Yeah. And yeah, it's just a reality. Indeed. All right. True or false? Chris Ash was right to run out the clock at the end of the first half no. against Penn State. Oh, God. False. <laughs> false. I mean, yeah. like, I, I just, like, look, you know what? These people who were telling me, oh, you know, he, he put Gio in to win. It's like, okay, if you put him in to win, then, like, I, I, I really don't have words for this. Like, I don't understand. Like, you have a chance to beat Penn State. If you beat Penn State, the whole world changes. But you only get to beat Penn State if you get into halftime down a, a score against Penn State. Because now that you're basically running the option, because you've changed your quarterback, you're not coming back from t two touchdowns down when you won't, when you basically refuse to throw the ball. So it's, you brought so yeah, much heat in your film review. You brought so much heat that my cereal this morning, it was cold cereal when I started reading your film review. It was porridge when I was done, man. It was too hot. I couldn't <laughs> touch my cereal. All the, and the film review, let me tell you, this just shows the excellence of film review, Sarge. The fact that it can go from analysis to just fire. Fire is what we got from the film review today. Stop yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest with you. As soon as I was done reading it, like I, you know, I was about to call nine one one. The fire department was, was on its way. It was really <laughs> tough. Yeah, you know, false oh, alarm. I love it. All right, true or false? I, I, I didn't say my answer. I said, I said false. By the way, for the record, I said false. Oh, okay, but yeah, exactly right. what true or false? Said. Spring practice should start should start with an open competition at quarterback. True or false? True. And I, I, that's not an indictment on, on, on Sikowski because I, I still think, you know, he, he you know, the, the guy, yeah. you know, is a Big Ten talent. I think he has a, a chance, you know, if they surround him with some wide receivers and, you know, a, 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 you know, a, you know, a solid offensive line. Right. But I think, you know, for sure, I think that you need to, uh, uh, you know, improve the depth in that, in that quarterback room. I would say true as well. But my question is like, okay, so what's the competition? Well, that's transfer. the next question. True or false? Rutgers need to add, does Rutgers need to add a grand transfer to, yes. to or a JUCO quarterback to them? True. true. Not that's JUCO. True, right? not, well, maybe JUCO, but I mean, I would say grand transfer. You know, I, a couple of guys come to mind. There's one guy yeah. who comes to mind really big. Can we say his name? Go ahead. Yeah, we're, 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 we're not going to about him. Yeah, Notre, Dame, I, I, Notre Dame, I, I, Dame quarterback? I would kick Jersey the tires. Guy. I would kick the tires. Kick the tires. Holy crap. I'd buy the car. I'd put the down payment down. He definitely would make sense, obviously. I, I think that the, the big question with him is, you know, he's a very, you know, 
bright young man who I think was a big future ahead of him, maybe not necessarily in football. So, you know, what does he want? Does he want I mean, a Notre Dame degree is, is pretty special. You know, you can go places with that. So does he want to keep playing football? And at that point, too, I mean, I, I saw somewhere Penn State was mentioned as a potential place that could be interested in a guy like him. So I think He's the question is, you know, he has yeah, options. Does he want to come to Rutgers in a position where, you know, hey, it, Rutgers would hope that Art beats him out, obviously. Well, keep, 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 keep in mind, too. Keep in mind, too. And keep in mind, too. He's from St. Peter's Prep, right? And, and you know, his, yeah. his heir apparent was John Lewis. Not like John Lewis is, you know, has, has had a great experience at Rutgers, you know. So, you know, all that. I know Jonathan and, and, and Wimbush are pretty tight. So, you know, the idea that he's going to come to Rutgers, you know, uh, you know, a- after seeing that, I, I, I think it's, you know, again, couple of the fact that he has, he, he'll have some options. I don't think that's a, you know, a, a slam dunk that he, he'd even consider Rutgers at this point. All right. True or false? Do you, uh, true or false, that R- Rutgers should consider adding and go after hard Chris Partridge from the Michigan staff, a New Jersey guy, Bremis Catholic coach, <laughs> true or false? Complicated. I say true because I, because, you know, I, I, I've seen, you know, quotes, you know, from Jim Harbaugh saying that this guy isn't just a great recruiter, but he's a really good coach. I've heard other people who, who know him, you know, in, 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 in Jersey recruiting circles think that the guy's a really good coach in addition to being, you know, a very good recruiter. Uh, so I say true. But that being said, you still have the idea that, and, and, you know, something that we talked about a couple of years ago where, where Kyle Flood, uh, th- uh, tried to, to make him, you know, uh, bring him on staff back when it, you know, it was almost like a yeah. outlandish idea that, you know, just because, you know, he's tight with, you know, the, the, the Paramus Catholic, you know, crowd it's not like he has a great relationship with a lot of other North Jersey um coaches so and you know including one on you know supposedly from everything that we are always heard you know Nunzio Campanelli who's on staff now so complicated that being said answers true Wow. I say false, and it has nothing to do with Chris Partridge. I'm just saying false on the presumption that Ash is still the head coach. I just don't see how having Chris Partridge on the same staff as Chris Ash is a recipe for success because the day the guy comes here, the fan base is going to want him to overthrow Ash and be the head coach. And I just don't see how that's, how that's a healthy situation. There is a little Fred Hill Jr. Uh, situation where Fred Hill came in and, and, and uh, you know, Pretty much the perception that he was a coach and waiting on Gary Waters when Gary Waters was a lame duck in year five. How'd that work out? Did not uh, work true out. True or false? Well. <laughs> did not work the, out. The last uh, winning, winning. And I talked to Gary Waters uh, last week. <laughs> with the did. last winning oh, record God. among only one coach since Tom Young retired in '85 has oh. had a winning record. Gary Waters was five games above 500, as Crazy. it turned out. You know, and and you know didn't so get the SAT right here. Yeah, without question, that did not turn out well. Oh, but, True or false, a win against Michigan State would change the perception of the season. False. I don't. Are people even going to know what happened? I totally agree with you on that. False. false. What do you say? I, I will, I, I'll say false, but I will say it would show once and for all, because I don't know. I always take it with a grain of salt that, you know, that the players haven't given up. Uh, it would show right. once and all, for all that the players did not give up, you know, on, on That's Chris true. Ash. That's true. And this team did destroy Michigan State. Destroyed Rutgers last year, so there would be a sense the season's ending well, and that's that's at least you know at least something. It's at least something. All right. Uh, and finally, true or false? Ohio State is going to upset Michigan in the game to throw the Big East into chaos. True or false? Big East, Big Ten. Sorry. False. False. You like Michigan? I like Perhaps? Michigan. False. I I think yeah. that. Uh... Michigan wins, and it would not shock me if Ohio State is a new head coach next season. Um, wow, uh, well, well, that being, that's crazy. That being said, I mean, I, my predictions were terrible, and I, I, as we speak, I'm trying to scrub NG.com with my 6-6 six and six prediction before the year on Rutgers. <laughs> that being said, I did pick Michigan to go to, to finish 11-1 and one and win the Big Ten East, and people said, well, who's their one loss? And I said it was going to be the Notre Dame, which turned out to be true, and I did pick uh, Michigan to win, uh, you know, to, to, to go 11-1, so... You know, that uh, might be the only yeah. prediction I got right, so I'm not taking a bow for it. But, right. you know, I, I will. Yeah. Since, you know, the topic was brought up, and I know Steve Politi never actually gives me any credit on any of this type of stuff. You know, I figure well, I'd have to need. credit myself. It's hard to give you credit when you pick, pick this team to go 6-6. Six and six. I mean, at least you got, you got me there, right? I mean, I mean I, I, by the way, the the, 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 the pickets to, uh, to, to uh, 
you know, Detroit for the quick lane ball, non-refundable. So yeah. I, I, I'm going to have to, <laughs> you know, talk to our bosses and try, anyway. to, get, try yeah. to get that, you know, expensed. Who's in the Who's in the quick lane bowl crack? You must do that bowl prediction. <laughs> I believe. Who, I who, believe who, who we got? Uh, it was Buffalo. I believe will actually be in the quick lane bowl if they win the oh. MAC. Because I don't think the Big Ten is going to be able to fulfill their. The Big Ten's not going to fill their slot. I don't think they're going to have enough ball eligible teams. Uh, so I think the MAC champion will have the right to choose a trip to the quick lane bowl return trip wow. to Detroit. So uh, I think it might be Buffalo, uh, another team. I mean, I think the ACC will have a team to send there, maybe like a Duke or something. Uh, yeah. Potentially, maybe even Boston College. Now, they're kind of slip sliding down the bowl rankings. Another yeah. match team to watch out for that game, BYU. ESPN has to get them in a bowl game if they're eligible. So I think you could potentially see uh, the Cougars go to Detroit. Oh, my God. I feel like Excellent. I feel like Politi must feel whenever we start talking about Olympic sports on this podcast. Yeah, exactly. I'm already <laughs> tuned it out. All right. So let's let's talk about a couple more things before we make a prediction for this weekend. Um, uh, I love I tell you, and and this is a funny moment today at the press conference. So you know we're obviously things are a little tense. We've we've written some negative things. Uh, John McNulty walks into the press conference today, oh. Monday, sees me sitting in the front row, and goes, "Oh, look who's here, Jim Acosta," <laughs> <laughs> which is a real, tremendous which is a really, line. Which is a really good line. And I I said to him, well, I haven't had my credential taken away, and he said. Or did you have to take legal action to get it back? I thought that was pretty good. Like, okay, Tremendous. It's it's funny. Tremendous. Tremendous line. I, I, we've, we've all enjoyed having McNulty back because he, of his, he's very honest and gives great answers to the one, you know, once a week we get to talk to him, great answers at press conferences. Um, you know, I was, uh, you know, his answer today, I want to, you guys take your guys' take on it, what you thought of what he said about the offense. And my takeaway was that, you know, A, he, 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 need, he sees the need to have more competition at quarterback. B, the receivers who are on the field now that we're watching, you know, it's not just us who are seeing this. <laughs> you know, it's like it, it's him. He sees this as well, that this is, you know, this is not working. Uh, but, but D, but C, he was also hopeful that things, that things can get better on, for this offense. What did you, what were your takeaways from what he said? Yeah, I mean, I, I've kind of felt that I th- thought the Ohio State game was, was a big kind of moment for them because, he, I know you weren't there, Steve, but you, know, you watched the game and like for the first couple series, like you could see like, you know, they had a game plan and there were things that were available to them and they just couldn't execute them. And I really feel like, you know, I don't want to put words in McNulty's mouth, but it just feels like that was the game where he looked around and was like, oh, you know, Kenny and Ray aren't here anymore. You know, like we, yeah, yeah exactly. We, you know, right. like we, well, this is not what, what, you know, it yeah. used to be. And I just think, yeah, like there have been several moments throughout the season where He's had the players in position to succeed, and yeah. just for whatever reason, they haven't. And I, and I think that it really speaks to the whole thing that they they got to get better players. And, you know, I, I think it's unfortunate because they they have a scheme – that I think will work. And I think that over time, if they have success in it, it will just lead to more success because he can go out and say, guys, I've coached in the NFL for, you know, two decades. You know, this is what I'll get you ready to play up there. And I think that could appeal to recruits if they start winning games and having success in offense. But right now, uh, they're just not having it. Yeah. yeah I think we've, we've talked about early, you know, in the year that uh, we've seen plays that, you know, would work. I mean, that guys are open, they drop balls. I mean, the Philly special, you know, this past week, that was a oh gussy call, yeah. you know, well designed, you know, and, you know, Gio just dropped it. And, you know, fifth year senior, he owned it, talked about it, you know, after the game, he, you know, he felt terrible about it, but, you know, it is what it is. So, but you're not blaming the offensive coordinator for that. You're not blaming the offensive coordinator for the fact that they have not gotten a 50 50 ball since, I think, uh, like you know, 2009 was the last time, you know, a wide receiver got a 50 50 ball. It's just, you're not blaming. Right, and I right. keep on go, going back. You know, Jerry Kill was a very accomplished guy before he got here. You know, his offense was 128th in the, in the country. John McNulty was a very successful guy in his previous stint, had some success in the NFL. You know, they're 129th or 130th, in, you know, in, in every single category in the country. You know, these are guys who are accomplished guys. At some point, you just have to say it's a personnel issue. 
Yeah, yeah, and it was very telling. James Franklin at his, pre- at his post-game press conference uh, it just admitted as such. Like you know, we we were worried about Rutgers on defense. We knew they could run the game, run the ball, but we're not. We we think we're good enough defensively that we're going to beat a one-dimensional team, and that's what that team was. I mean, he just came out and said it. They couldn't. It was not like it's any secret, but it was it was pretty telling that he said it. All right, do we want to cover anything else before we get to predictions? What was what were some other topics you guys got? That's it. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I just want to talk no. about Michigan State again. I've come back full circle. No. This is, you know, let's talk about football. Let's talk about Michigan State. For the love of God, the six and five Spartans need this game for something or other, right? We're, we're just dismissing it. How dare we? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I haven't really, you know, I normally dive in like, you know, you know, late Monday night, you know, with, with, on, on the <laughs> opponent, see what everyone else is writing. Um, and I'm kind of curious. Right. What would six and six, and you know, would, would that put Antonio with you know all the other stuff you know the guys accomplished an amazing amount of stuff over there but you know by that being said you know they're all, I, I you know going into the season and you know when when you know D'Antonio was on the hot seat a couple of years ago you there is a guy out there who everyone always says makes perfect sense that's uh, Narduzzi from, from Pittsburgh they're going to go to the ACC championship game it'll be interesting to see wow. you know could, could you know and I'm just speculating here again I haven't really dived into Michigan State but could we be, you know, looking at a situation where maybe, you know, both coaches could be on the hot seat right now? Yeah, that's a that's a, that's a fantastic point. I mean, a loss to Rutgers, that's the kind of thing that wakes up an athletic director and a, and a fan base. Ken Cratch, all right, so this is this team is at, almost as bad, not as bad, almost as bad offensively. I mean, they, the numbers are terrible for Michigan State. They have an excellent defense. Is this an upsettable, winnable game in your mind? I don't think so, because this is the weird thing. Uh, in in terms of like the the score progression over the years since Rutgers joined the Big Ten, for whatever reason, they have been hammered. Most, save yeah. the Norris yeah. Wilson spike on fourth down game, Michigan State <laughs> has really hammered them. Like the average score of the four games is forty one to seven. You know, this game has right. been less competitive than Rutgers against Penn State, even. So. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the line is way too big. Like Michigan like State opens like a 27 and a half point favorite. That's just That's a sucker big. line. But that being said, yeah. I mean, yeah. this defense is excellent. We don't know who's starting at quarterback. Uh, I, I think that on one hand, part of me thinks that they, they, they'll just go back to art like they have all year. On the other hand, I almost wonder if they feel like they've boxed themselves into a corner. You know, like, yes, they, they moved the ball when Gio was in the second half, but, you know, it, you had a couple, you had a penalty in there, and a, you know, and like as great as the Philly special looked, you really shouldn't need to run that trick play to, to score from the goal line. Like, give me a score. Do you think Art should be back? I mean, what what would you do? Would you put Art back in there? I would put oh, Art I'd... back in there just because I think the whole yeah. season ha- you basically after the Kansas game decided, or the Buffalo game, you decided that this season is about developing art and the offense and what you want to do and the whole idea of the offensive identity. Uh, so I feel like it's really kind of silly or pointless to suddenly go with the, well, let's tailor the offense and try to win a game, you know, like week 12 I, or week 13. Yeah. I, yeah. I go with, and I, and I, you know, this is where, you know, Chris Ash is, is, you know, smart and like uh, can control the narrative. He comes out on Thursday and says, we're starting Geo. Art Sikowski is our, the future of our program. We're going to Michigan State to win this game. Um, and, and I think in a lot of ways, it's a reward to the seniors and show, it's a show of faith to them that we're, you know, we're, we're not, and this isn't about developing for the future. James is right. Probably if, you, if, if you're trying to develop your quarterback uh, for the future, you want to give Sikowski another start. Um, but we saw the Penn State game. There was no comparison. The offense moved the ball better with Gio Rusinho as the offense. I'm not saying that Gio should have been, you know, starting uh, throughout the whole season. You know, I, that would be unfair of me. It's hindsight uh, to, to say that. I, right. I don't believe it, but I believe going to Michigan State, the best, the quarterback that gives Rutgers the best chance to win, to move the ball, you know, the quarterback who's won Big Ten games on the road, you know, it, it's, it's Gio Rusinho. Yeah. He should be starting on, on, on Saturday. 
Oh, wow, that's interesting. The, the problem, the problem with that is then that we're you know you're pretty much saying that this season was, and I wrote this that it was no. you know I'm I'm sorry I'm just not seeing it with I did not see it with art. I I wanted to see it. I thought I saw it. I convinced myself that I was seeing it. I just didn't. I mean, it just I didn't see what. Okay. You yeah, I, I saw I saw kid. enough gl- glimpses, and I still think the guy the, the kid has a lot of talent, and he works his butt off. And everyone I talk to behind the scenes, everyone says the the kid just works his butt off. Um, I believe. I believe in, that. You know, I believe. I, 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 I believe that. So I, I, I honestly, I, I don't, I don't think a Big Ten quarterback. A, I just didn't see that. Did, <laughs> did you see Big Ten quarterback? Did you see something that make you say, next year that kid is going to reverse those two whatever seven touchdowns and eighteen whatever the numbers are? Yeah. Did you see something that you, the interceptions yeah. concern me, and it was something that we kind of talked about. I wrote about. I mean, I, I it's on edgy dot com. I wrote about it in the summer that the inter, he he might be interception prone based on the limited stuff that we did see. That does concern me. Okay, I but I think he has, has the talent. I think he works hard, um, and I think a lot of the issues stem from the lack of playmakers. I would be interested to see if Rutgers can actually put some playmakers behind him and maybe. Give him and uh, just a chance to be Mike Teal in twenty in two thousand six or Tom Savage in two thousand nine, you know, a, a guy who wasn't asked to do everything and could have you right. know some some playmakers. Can Rutgers do that? You know, going into his sophomore year and just let him be a game manager and you know be Mike Teal in two thousand six or, or or Tom Savage in two thousand nine. Yep. yep, I mean, two moments right, stand out pick? to me from this season. Yeah. Um, the first was that beautiful, like, back of the end zone touchdown pass he threw in, in the Texas State game to Washington that got negated yeah. by the man, extra man in the backfield, and they threw the pick the next time. Like, that was kind of a microcosm. I also look back to that Indiana game. If they, Rutgers doesn't jump off sides and they get the ball back, the kid would have had a chance to go down the field and potentially tie the game, maybe even win the game if they were gutsy and went for two. I, I just always thought, what would that moment have been like if, Ball was in his hands. You know, here's 80 yards. Go, kid. You know, we just never really saw that. I, I think he's shown enough that he has promised. I don't think people should give up on him just yet. But at the same time, I'm not as confident as I was maybe going into the season that he's going to be, you know, the surefire guy. I still think he'll get there, but I, I do think that he's going to need to a big step forward next year. Yeah, I'm just having a hard time scrubbing Maryland. I'm having a hard time scrubbing uh, the first half last week. Just so many bad throws and and just a lack of accuracy and overall, I, I don't know. We're gonna find out probably. All right, give me a give me give me a prediction for this week. What do, you said? It's twenty seven and a half. Is that right? Wow. It was. I, I don't think it's there at that point, but it was. I'll check it right okay. now as where you guys are picking. Is it gonna be a close game, Cratch? What do you think? Oh, you uh, oh, sorry. You go first then. Yeah, I'll go know. first. Um, yeah, I mean, I. I 24-14. Michigan okay. State, obviously. Right. Michigan that State, 24-14. Yeah. Yeah. I just, the 14, I have, I, have, I have a hard time with the 14. <laughs> I just don't see them scoring uh, more than a touchdown, so I'm going to have to go with another, you know, a 31-7 type game. I'll say 24-7. 24-7. Seven. Seven. Yeah, that's about right. Michigan State. All right, well... Uh, yeah, we'll see if it's, if it's as interesting, if it's a mundane week or if it's something interesting happens unrelated to what's on the field, uh, Monday, you know, we, we're, we're as in the dark as anybody. And, right by, now, Monday, it's, and by it's, Monday it's, to come full circle, maybe we can have like a name, you know, going in, you know, you know, in, in, into next year. Maybe we could finally settle on a name. You know, we never did do that, did we? We need to do, we will, we, we will have that in our Monday wrap up press conference. We will also pick out a name. That's a guarantee. Uh, the two of you work on it over Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm just going to uh, get drunk on my in-laws, so uh, that's, yeah, just make sure I will not be. I will not be involved in that. Uh, the, the, does it have to be Thanksgiving for you to be drunk at your in-laws, or is it? Uh, you know, does it really have to be Thanksgiving? Pretty much, pretty much from the moment I walk in the house. Uh, all right, on that cheery note, uh, let's sign off. Uh, Steve Politi, James Cratch, Keith Sargent. Look forward to the final podcast, at least for the football season, uh, next Monday. Thanks for listening.